Cath I Love, number 52. Turn inwards to the light. Obviously that's a, a meditative phrase. Certainly turn inwards. But turn inwards to the light. <clears throat> this is a, a suggestion by Henri de Nabors, a Katha Parfait, Perfecte, Bonhomme. And when I first was told about it, read about it, I, I, I didn't have a clue. I certainly was meditating, but I didn't know what uh, Henri was uh, talking about. And then uh, in uh, the book that had the, the dialogues, which I'm just redoing and re-editing, and that'll be on Kindle and a couple of other books, so they'll all be on Kindle, and, and I'll mention what they are at a later date. But, uh, so it's just being redone. Uh, Anyway, here was this admonition, this suggestion that we turn inwards to the light. And also, when he was talking uh, about uh, meditating, and he said uh, on Matthias, me, John, uh, will understand. Uh, he knows about that. And I thought, well, I haven't got a clue. No idea. But I, I <laughs> the thing was, I was more or less using this approach and, and I didn't realize it. Now when we think about meditating, we, we uh, well, spoke a little about it on the, the previous, uh, previous segment, number 51. We, we tend to think about it as, a, as an Eastern practice, I mean China, Korea, uh, <coughs> Tibet, uh, with Buddhism and the Zen, the Zen Buddhism. And, and uh, so the, the practice is certainly widespread in the East and uh, we tend, to, Westerners often think of it as, as an Eastern practice. But in actual fact it has a very long history in the West, going right back to the, uh, the mystery religions and going to Socrates and Plato and uh, because uh, Plato stated that by contemplation, quietness, stillness and contemplation, we could actually uh, communicate uh, with the, the divine or the divine forms or with ideas and then uh, Plotinus who came a few hundred years later yeah Plotinism was named after him and he talked about uh, again this trans transcending our lives and but he, what he was aiming for was a connection with the divine with the one or the source or the monad as he, he, he termed it and he said that one could go about that by uh, in a meditating <coughs> and this tradition which uh, when there was a certainly when there was a split between the uh, orthodox and the uh, the roman catholic church or the roman catholic church did away with uh, they, they did contemplation where you thought about things and thought about God, Christ, or whatever. And uh, you, had, you had the the monks, the Catholic monks, there's plenty, plenty of monks in monasteries, and nunneries, where they uh, were out to set a, uh, to uh, have a, a a life of uh, contemplation. But or the, the Orthodox, they continued on with this Platonist, Neoplatonist tradition going right back to the mystery religions which preceded all of these things whereby you sought meditation but not so much contemplation because contemplating, contemplation obviously the very term it means use of the mind. Theirs was to rid the mind of thoughts, ideas uh, and different, uh, different people have different ideas and they would in 
by gaining this quietness, this silence, they would turn inwards. Now this is the, the Cathar system. They, they continued with this. Uh, and uh, it's a system where we, uh, well, one of the, the main things is, of course, is to rid the mind of thinking or thoughts, quiet the mind, have the mind absolutely still. And I mentioned in the previous one, <laughs> it took me a, a while to do that. But once you do it, it's like riding a bike. You, you just get better and better, and, uh, and you can do it for whenever you want. And, and, uh, and I, was, I won't say as long as you want, but that's up, that's up to the individual and how expert you are and how tired you are and things like that. But it's, it's, it's a giving away. It's actually, someone described it as, your mind is like a tub of water, and you're just letting all that water, which is all your feelings, your emotions, those for good, for ill, for it doesn't matter what type of emotion or feeling, you're getting rid of the lot. You're draining the mind, draining the mind. So uh, that's that's one process, and fine, that's fine. Uh, another way of looking at that is uh, that you're detaching yourself from all, from uh, obviously from thinking. Uh, but you're, you're detaching yourself from all forms of material things, even spiritual things. You're detaching yourself and letting go of everything that you possibly can. So there's another way of moving in, moving inwards, moving inwards. Uh, another concept, if you like, is by just uh, imagine everything about yourself, uh, your, your mind, your body, your ideas, your thoughts, your personality, you rid yourself of everything that you possibly can so that there's literally only the most fundamental aspect, the most critical, it's a pretty critical part, but the most fundamental part of your nature, well, the Cathars will call that. Uh, 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 Cathars will call that your, your your divine spark, because this is your your divine spark. To the Cathars is your unchanging individuality. When you take everything away and you get to the the utmost innermost core of your being. Uh, your it's your eternal identity. It's like uh, there's your fingerprint. Well, this is your personality print, your basic personality print that you'll carry from the point of creation right through for eternity. Uh, so it's your eternal, eternal identity. Uh, it's it's your absolute inner essence. So you can look at that another way is by saying we strip ourselves of everything, our mind, our body, our soul, until you get to this particular point. And it's just this this particular point in, in within space of the cosmos of the universe. And you're trying to get to this particular point, uh, conceptual point. Uh, and there you, you, you connect. The other thing in doing these particular forms, if you wish to, if they suit you, <laughs> experiment with them. Uh, I, I'm just discussing it, discussing them. But the thing is, they're all to turn you into this, uh, some call it, turn it, well as Omri said, turn inwards to the light. and. Uh, it's, it's the light, how to express that. Uh, we can't, we, so the Cathars, you Gnostics, the Taoists, there's many, you, the God or the Source, the Creator, is unknown to us, it can't be known to us, it's just beyond our, certainly our human comprehension. Uh, we may have a, a bit deeper comprehension of the world of spirit as we progress, but certainly it's unknown to us. So, but some people say, although it's unknown, we can see, we can see creation, we can see nature around us, we can see the birds and the bees and the trees and the rocks and this, so we can see the effect or the effects, you and me, how, how we're put together, this, this amazing planet Earth and how it's all sitting there, how we need the moon and everything to stabilize us and everything seems to be just right to create life. It's an amazing thing. So there's 
it even looks as though there was, there was an act of creation from this absolutely magnificent design. But anyway, uh, irrespective of how you look at that, uh, we can't know we, we, we can't know the creator, we can't know the source. But it's like it's like the sun. Uh, we can't know the sun. But what we can know and what we can feel is we can feel and see the rays of light, the sunlight coming from the sun. So that's probably a good way of describing this divine light, uh, this unutterable light, this unutterable silence that you're moving towards. Now, one other thing that separates this particular form of meditation from pure contemplation and other forms of meditation, and there are many, many different forms of meditation. But I'm talking basically about the Kathar system, and they were renowned for people for meditating. And there's a comment in various books and so forth that people would walk past and there was the Kathars just sitting down and, and meditating, and meditating for hours. So it was very much a part of their, 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 their uh, spiritual life. Uh, so, it's turning into the light, but it, it's uh, because we're trying to, because we're ridding our mind of our thoughts and we're, we're shutting down our minds and so forth. So, what, what we're doing is we're, we're out to communicate at the level of our heart, not the mind, at the level of our heart. And so, it's a level we can't even control. So what we're trying to do is, is create the um, create the, the not the atmosphere or create the situation that allows the heart to communicate with the divine. And we're there in doing this and, and allowing our heart to communicate, uh, connect with the light, with the, this silence, this depth of silence. Uh, and allowing allowing that to happen, and we, as meditators, will all have our own various uh, personal experiences. Now, <laughs> taking me as an example, it's uh, it's not something you do in a hurry, and it's not something that uh, uh, that you you. Uh, I mean, I've had meditative experiences, and. Uh, but I'm uh, reading about some of these uh, experiences that some of these meditators, these monks, have had, had some go to the desert. And they go to the desert for the simple reason that in the desert there's absolute stillness. There's no birds, no animals living in a cave. You've got this absolute, uh, utter silence. It's about as silent as you can get on, on this, on this earth, on our uh, earthly planet. And they go there, and you, and they, some of these people talk about their experiences. So they're obviously having amazing experiences. But from the, the likes of you and I, uh, well, I don't know. I, there's no, I'm in Sydney. There's, a, there's no desert around here. And the other thing is that we're living in today's world, uh, in today's society. Things are as they are. <laughs> well, I don't like them, but they are as they are. And so us, it's. It's uh, uh, it's not like having to, like a lot of the monks and Buddhists and Christians and nuns and all these various things. They gave they became celibate for this, gave away sex. Well, that's up to you. So you <laughs> I don't want to give it away. And it, it doesn't matter from a Catholic point of view. All the natural functions, whatever it is, a good glass of wine, sex, a spot of gambling if you want to. All these things, the movies. Uh, all the things that we have, the technological things such as computers, and we're using technology now, those things are there, they're there. But they're things to be used, uh, but don't abuse, including ourselves, uh, and and not to be obsessed about it. Uh, just to diverge slightly, the whole point of, of uh, uh, detachment uh, is not the fact that you want something, I mean, oh, I'm here, I'm, I'm going to live in the country, I'm going to need a car, I want this, or I might need a few cars, or 
or you like a, that particular car, you just happen to like it. Uh, now, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with wanting anything, there's, there's something that you can use, something that you want, something you just might just want to look at it, you, you just you like it, you want it, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not attachment, attachment is if you can't get it, ah, now I'm upset, this is, so uh, the attachment is not in desire or wanting that, it's when it worries you that you, 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 uh, you're obsessed by your desires and if you can't get it, you're then very upset. This is the problem. So, having to swing back again. <coughs> so turn inwards to the light. Uh, it's it's a, a Cathar system of doing that and what they did and I'm obviously as much as I can, I'm trying to follow in that particular area, that particular path, but in a, in a, in a not the medieval Catharism, but Catharism for a different age, Catharism for our age, Catharism that's universal. It doesn't matter if you're an alien, we sat down there, he said, yeah, 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 it's okay, I can understand that, unconditional love, uh, this and that, he said, this is why we, we don't have wars and so forth and so on, and this is why, why we can get things done and we've given away uh, hate and dislike and all these things. So I'm, I'm basically uh, Catharism, and, but in the universal form and love, and I'm basically, I don't really have much time for anything that pulls people apart, that uh, race, religion, politics, we, we need politics, we have to think about who our politicians are and what's best for our country, of course. But anything that actually that has a, has a, that divides us. So I'm for things that bring us together. I'm things for absolutely uh, YouTube and uh, dancing and and uh, art, music, literature. Anything that can bring people together, I'm for. Anything that divides people, I'm not for. So therefore, I have a healthy. Uh, I respect. I respect the religious people, not I respect religions, but I really, I try and keep away from that, that altogether. So, uh, the Catharism, the modern Catharism, is basically, it's philosophical concepts, and it needs to be this way, because the way you go about your life and how you pursue, for instance, how you wish to meditate, or whichever it is, <coughs> that's your system. I can be a, we can be Gnostics and Cathars, but I've got my system because it is philosophical. We can we can disagree. We can we're on the same path, but we we have our own journeys. This is this is when we just respect the other person's uh, the, the other person's journey. So I'm today just explaining this Henri de Henri de la Bourse, his uh, suggestion that when we meditate, we turn inwards. To the light. So it's a fairly, it's a very small phrase, but it's a fairly large area and can be some complex concepts. And but you take from it what I've said anything, and if you can use it, that's great. But this is the the, the concepts and the ideas behind turning inwards to the light. And it's turning in, it's turning into silence, into quietude divesting our minds of thoughts and thinking, detaching ourselves to whatever degree you want to. Uh, and at a certain point, uh, the dif that difference is that allowing your heart, now your heart obviously is to also to do with love, and uh, it's, uh, and to the Greeks our heart was where we think, but how our hearts is where we store our higher consciousness and our higher thoughts were in our heart. So, and who's to say that that's not correct? And so we're allowing our, our heart to connect with the inner light, the inner silence, the uh, and uh, this is this manner of turning into the light. So take from it what you will, if any. Uh, it, this is certainly my system, this is what I do and I'm forever looking for ways and means and different ideas that might assist me as I meditate. I don't meditate every day, uh, 
it's very systematic, spasmodic. Sometimes I get up and I meditate, and sometimes I think, hmm, that's great. Um, I just like to go and meditate. And uh, so I, I tend to do it when I f feel like doing it. And sometimes it might be three or four times a week, sometimes more, sometimes once a week, and occasionally not at all. So uh, I don't, for me, I, there's no rules. I do it because I enjoy it. I do it because I, I'm trying to get more connection uh, from an inward point of view. And uh, uh, I can't say that I've been uh, abs uh, successful at I, I, uh, that, but the thing is, I do enjoy the experience, and that's the main thing. And I feel better for the experience. Uh, that's even more important. So, once again, thank you for listening. Bye for now.